Hello guys, this is Pap from Pap back at it again and today of course, actually with a little bit of delay, so sorry for that, but uh, I had stuff going on yesterday, uh, I, I had to go to pay my taxes and stuff like that, so don't, don't even make me remind about that, so, but here we are, uh, Red Eyes is here, uh, and is he top tier though, of course, I'm gonna give you my build, no Kansas drop card, and actually I found something that maybe a lot of people slapped on uh, that the skill provides us, because yeah, you're gonna see this in a minute, but before jumping right into it guys, just a quick reminder, if you enjoy the content, please leave a like and subscribe, I really appreciate it, and it really helps me a lot, let's jump right into it. So, I'm here with Joy, the DSOD one, just because I... I like him more, it feels more like a man, you know, it's, it's not a guy, it's like a man, a, a man done, you know what I mean, so, and this is the build, we have some consideration to do, first thing first, um, I'm actually playing this guy, but it's very, it's almost impossible to summon him, because the only guy that I can summon him with is this dude, the Arch Phenom Lightning, that of course it's not treated as a normal monster when it's in your deck so you can't summon the skull dragon when this dude is in your deck the only um, case scenario when you're able to summon the uh, black skull dragon is where you actually have this guy on the field and it's still treated as a normal monster but it's never going to happen and to be honest you kind of didn't need it so yeah um, and yeah, this is the first thing. Uh, second, if I had the Red Eyes Iron Knight, this dude right here. What is it? What is it? What is it? Oh, actually, I don't have it. If I had this guy, I will definitely play it. Um, just to reduce the number of cards here, you know. Uh, even though the Shield Warrior happened to be useful a couple of times, so if you have this, you can play it instead of one Red Eyes Retro Dragon. But yeah, in the end, you're fine with that. And what else do we have here? Uh, I love this because this has some very, some very nice plays. So the best thing around here is the piercing, the piercing the darkness. This thing literally can uh, stop a lot of the current meta right now, like Lunar Lights, for example. Um, if you have pressing the darkness on the field, if Luna Lights cannot get rid of this, they can't beat you over. Like, you can just... They can just attack, or you can just attack, and even with the Red Eyes Black Dragon, and you're always gonna have the upper hand when attacking or being attacked. So, that's just so cool. This also provides additional draws each time, and with these two cards, especially the Return of the Red Eyes, you literally can draw each turn, considering even your opponent's turns. Crazy, crazy. But the last thing is, and this is the the spice. We have even more spice playing literally, literally seven entrops. The the first four are the double Shtana and the double Mapura that of course are going to protect your um, Red Eyes Black Dragon that thanks to the skill that lets you normal summon this and the triple summoner's art plus the return of the Red Eyes you literally gonna have always a, a Red Eyes Black Dragon on the field, right? So that's really cool and uh, this pr literally protects from targeting so it negates stuff that targets like crackdown like compulsory uh, or any other effects uh, that targets of course like this instead as even a, a counter attack because of course he pops the monster your opponent controls so very nice but we have even more uh hand traps red eyes retro dragon i mean kind of an end traps this is a recovery moreover because um this uh, literally lets you special summon all the red eyes monsters that were destroyed so this is a play against dark for example if your opponent starts with dark and you have this dude in your hand you can just if they pop everything you just use red eyes retro dragon and special summon everything back from the graveyard love it um What's the spicy thing that I think a lot of people slapped on with this skill? You know, the skill says that you can normal summon Red Dice Black Dragon without no, without tributing, and we know that. You have to play 7 Red Dice, and that's fine. Um, 
Um, this says you can change the battle position or that's Black Dragon, the turn you have normal summon it face down. Uh, so this is of course in order to let you have a Redice Black Dragon on the field, search your Redice Fusion and be able to activate the Redice Fusion. Because Redice Fusion has uh, a downside that says that you can't normal summon or sat. Actually, you can't normal summon the turn you activate this card. So, you can set your red eyes, flip it up, it doesn't count as a normal summon, so that you can you can search your red eyes fusion and use it. But this is something that's going to happen only if you go second. Your first turn is ideally something else, because here comes the spice about the, the second part of the skill that a lot of people slapped on. If you control Red Eyes Monster, set one Red Eyes Spell Drop card from your deck to your field. Then if you control any normal monster, return one card from your deck. But the thing is, the card you set can be activated that turn, no matter, no matter if it's a trap card. So, I mean, we knew that if it was, if it was just uh, a spell card, I mean, it was pretty obvious, but it was not obvious for the trap card. This means that... As you will see in the replay, the ideal turn one combo for this deck could be your normal summer dice black dragon, you use red eyes inside if you have that in your hand of course, and you send another red dice black dragon to the graveyard, right? Then because you have the red eyes black dragon on the field, you can use the skill. You're gonna set the return of the red dice, or actually also the red dice speed, you usually wanna get this, of course. And you can activate that straight away. So this means that because you have another Red Eyes monster in your graveyard, thanks to the Red Eyes Insight, you can actually summon another Red Eyes on the field, having, having two level seven and going to your turn one play that could be a Doom Rider. Keep in mind that the Doom Rider summoned with two level seven normal monsters because their dragon not only enables Doom Rider to be a an interruption because it can pop monsters with its own effect. Actually, it can pop face up card that's even better, but also because it was normal summoned with a couple of normal monsters, if you have a pressing the darkness on the field, it makes this dude literally being not be able to, to be destroyed by battle. So, really cool because that's what piercing the darkness does mix your normal monsters and all the monsters you summon with the normal monsters included fusion summons synchro summons that we do not have and exceed summon not be destroyed by battle because you literally get of course the attack uh, of the monsters they're battling so this enables OTK but this makes you being undestructible by battle plus all of the entrops you can have, and I simply love this. Um, the entrop situation perfectly, perfectly synergizes with the Priest in the Darkness, because if you keep on summoning even during your opponent's turn, you can happen to draw into this stuff in your hand, and they're gonna be straight away useful. That's how it works. Uh, just one red dice fusion because literally it doesn't happen to have mo to use more than one anyway uh, so one is just fine and anyway it's not your best turn one to be honest so that's why one is totally fine the shield warrior is here to summon of course the red dice slash dragon that uh, you want to summon because you can bring him back with the red dice spirit from the graveyard as well so that's why you can do it and this th this dude in the graveyard can be so nice because he can literally save your monsters from destruction by battle um and dude i love this um i really love this probably even more than the blue eyes um i don't know why just because of this combo uh, and uh, basically have, uh, having access to a much larger um, extra deck uh, and yeah for the extra deck part of course you want to have these two dudes why not pretty genetic couple of doom rider can be very useful uh, especially combined with piercing the darkness they can enable otk so easily because this dude can literally make your attack even bigger and so you you can have basically a 4k attack the monsters attacking with the piece in the darkness makes means lethal on any attack position monster then we have the big guy you're gonna see some play with this love it and the dark armed why not be able to pop even a couple of cards per turn uh, actually in one turn guys that's it um uh, 
This is actually pretty free to play if I think about it, is, uh, except for the Piercing Your Darkness. But I, I would lie if I told you that it's not a cool part of the deck. Literally, this is so important. But uh, of course the deck can work without it. Uh, just gonna struggle a little bit more. Uh, but still, just love piercing darkness right here. Guys, that's my idea, of course. You know, you know, you're not gonna have um, the classic build with trap cards and dark hole. I'm not down for that. I'm gonna try something different. You can play that if you want. In this as well, it's not gonna disrupt the synergy of this that I just love. And, yep. Uh, of course, stay tuned for the replay to see the spice of being able to activate the Return of the Red Eyes had it with the skill, set with the skill straight away. That's simply, it's lovely. Um, that's all for the explanation, my boys. Let's jump right into the replays. Here we go, my boys. First replay. Keep in mind, all of these replays are from the King of Games rank, the rank I'm actually right now. And this was a mirror match, and it's us to go first. You're gonna see the uh, the spice that I told that I told you in uh, the Darklist breakdown. So this actually you can take advantage from the skill. There you go, piercing darkness to begin with. So because we're already planning on uh, going double with the uh, ending on Doom Rider on Volo Ferningers uh, first turn, we're gonna summon this guy because we do, do not wanna end just on a Red Eyes Fusion on the field, that's it. So we start with the Piercing Dark because we summon the Black Dragon so we get a draw, there you go, perfect, the Red Eyes Inside. So <clears throat> Red Eyes Inside, now with the skill we first set the red on with the red eyes then we use uh the uh, red eyes inside to send another black dragon because of course it's wood it's the one we want to summon and we grab the red eye spirit so we're chilling now and then boom red on the red eyes to summon the other red eyes so why do you search for this usually even if we do not have the red eyes fusion with the red eyes inside you want to search the spirit why because you want to be able to have a red eyes black dragon on the field um, uh, in order to be able to use this. Because keep in mind, the return of the red eyes is... The fact of this card can be activated only if you control the red eyes monster. Don't forget about it. Instead, the spirit can just bring out the red eyes, a red eyes monster anyway. So... There you go, we set that, then Xyz summon into Doom Rider. Now, this is our turn one, right? And we have an end drop, it's not the best one, but still a very good one because now we are of course being able to summon the red eyes monster from the graveyard anyway and if they pop that with a dark hole and affect monsters or anything we can just summon them back with the red dragon and any actually this guy as well keep in mind it can't be destroyed by battle because this dude was summoned with two black with two normal monsters so piercing the darkness effect is actually live so it's got the uh, summoner's art to begin with grabbing the actually the art that i missed because I wasn't able to get it from the um, KC Cup packs. And there you go, he's going, I guess, with uh, the skill. But guess what? I can just detach to pop it because the skill is activatable only if you control a Red Eyes monster. So I just pop that straight away. I get the boost. He's got Monster Reborn. But guess what? Red Eyes Spirit to cancel that. And yes, he can't do nothing. He just scooped at this point because he's got nothing. I also draw a card. Look at that draw. Exactly as I told you, the draw that you get from piercing the darkness, even during your opponent's turn, can be so productive, so good, so useful. Because the Mapura right now is live. We have a normal monster on the field. And if your opponent targets that, you can just negate. That's how you do it, my boys. There you go. Second duel, my boys, always the King of Games rank. Oh, of course, we got Red Eyes Reverse against what I don't know. Uh, and it's him to go first, so you, remember when you go second, you actually want to take in, into consideration to go with the Red Eyes Fusion to have more power, of course, attacking. And this is Elvel Twins, so yeah. But we have a couple of back rows that are actually pretty nice because the Elvel Twins are all about destroying cards. And. We love that, you know, with a Mapura in and a Red Eyes Retro Dragon, we're loving that. So it's got triple back rows, plus two, the Evil Two Twins, now exactly what we wanted. The Piercing the Darkness to begin with, then we went with this, because we want to be able to use the Red Eyes Fusion. There you go, Slash Dragon is here. Is he going to be top tier? Let's see together. Then Red Eyes Reverse, setting the um, the Return of the Red Eyes. He's got the Ballista Squad to begin with, popping the... 
um, uh, actually he target the, uh, the slash dragon and we can't do nothing with it. Actually we could use retro dragon but before, but because we use red dice fusion we actually can't because we can't special summon anymore after red dice fusion. So um, that's fine. Uh, then he went with the effect of uh, Lila to pop the black dragon. Guess what? Mapura can negate. And uh, then he used the effect the, of the GGEs in order to boost this boy. But we don't care. We can just attack. Look at that boost. Always inflicting 2400 when attacking with piercing the darkest. We love that. But it's got hold the combo away again. So it can just go with the key C kill. Of course, summoning the Lila from the graveyard. But first, I went with the red and red dice in order to have another boys another boy on the field also to draw a card you know what i mean and yeah piercing the darkness and he's got the ggs again in order to boost his boy um and he popped the return of the red dice but guess what the return of the red dice is another fact when he gets popped you can bring back a red dice monster from the graveyard we're going for the red dice slash dragon again and he, he draws a card he sets another back row he goes on with the key c kill but he already used the effect so he can just sit on that but how many times does he want to do that summoners are getting red dice black dragon at this point i just want to get my red dice there you know what i mean so he's popping the boy and that's fine Fine, then boosting himself, we don't care because we can just normal summon another boy, get another draw. The Shtana is here, so we have another end trap. Piercing the darkness for the for the um, boost, cross swipe to pop my red dice black dragon, Shtana to uh target that boy and pop a monster, but he's got the ice dragon prison. We're not done yet. Guess what? Chained the Red Eyes Retro Dragon to have another monster to attack with because now uh, I just wanted to have another. Maybe it was not the best idea, but I just wanted to have another monster on the field to, to feel safe. And Yap is not done yet. He's got uh, Regent of Heroes to recycling everything, just a set monster though. But at this point, we can just normal summon the dude. But when it's normal summon, He's a Norman monster, so guess who's drawing here? Another draw, another Prince in the Darkness, but we can just attack at this point. And we're chilling because we have the Red Eyes Retro Dragon and the dude just cooped. We went through Ice Dragon Prison, Cross Wipe, um, uh, multiple effects of Lilas. That's how you do it, my boys. There you go. Here we go, my boys. A third win in a row. Uh, here you can see the... Um, um, uh, I think it was actually very interesting that oh it's not this one it's the next one then so this is just Solomon Great um, and the next one is gonna be a cheesy combination of Fluffle, Zorkas and oh jeez Phantom Knight I want to see that later so this dude we can speed things up right this dude is gonna have uh, all this stuff probably hoping to hand on a needle ceiling um, he's got the sanctuary of course the wolf with facts he's got the circle probably this is the circle like if I remember correctly and he ended up, ended up with that but he used the effect of tree effects that I forgot to pay attention to because this thing actually made this boy um, uh, to not take damage from this guy, so that was the problem. Otherwise, we had lethal, literally. So we went with Red Dice Insight, as you can see. Then, Piercing the Darkness. I set this guy, because going second, I wanted to go with the Red Dice Fusion that was already in my hand. Uh, Red Dice Reverse to set that, and then Red Dice Fusion to go all the way into the Slash Dragon. Um, I was sure he wouldn't let me use this effect so that's why i set the red of red dice as well but that's fine uh piercing the darkness to add some damage he's got the sanctuary's effect but it's taking it's going to take no damage because of the effect of the skill it's got solomon gray circle now the thing is can he go through this uh, with all the stuff that Salomon Greats can do. Let's see. He started with the Belnix again, then he went to with the Fowl's effect, uh, special summon. He can use the effect to force this trap card. Guess what? I can just use it, actually activate it, but not use its effect. I can just wait. So, then he went with Gazelle, uh, special summon from the hand. Again, milling. 
Falco's effect to get this dude out. He's got Falco's effect to force the other one. Guess what? We're using that straight away now. Uh, another normal monster summon. So guess, guess who's drawing right here with the Piercing the Darkness? Not the draw we wanted to see, but still it's a draw. And then it's going on with the Security Dragon. Security Dragon targeting what? The Fusion Monster. That's fine. Uh, it's going on with the Fusion Summon. He's popping the, red, the Return of the Red Dice. But guess what? When you pop it, I can just summon a monster again. Cross wipe to pop my boy, but I could have negated that. But I said, you know what? I'm chilling. I just not negated. I prefer to negate the monsters in case he, he has one. He went with Ruster Leaguer, and actually, the thing is, he can't do nothing. Like, you can trip with any number of your monsters, this card points you to pop cards. He can't do it. Um, he can boost himself, though. He can boost himself, but even if he boosts himself, he can't go through the Red Dice Black Dragon. Because we are pressing the darkness, so he can't do nothing, even with that. He scooped, actually, uh, he had no time, but he scooped, he waited a little bit because he found himself without anything to do. Um, but yeah, that was... He couldn't have done anything anyway. That's how you're doing, my boys. There you go. Last but not least. Forward, win in a row. Let's see what we have. Uh, and this actually is that the the deck I was talking about before with cheesy or terrible or I don't I don't know how to consider that. It's just fluffles, but literally fluffles is just for the um, yeah the draw with toy vendor. Nothing more. There are no fluffle monsters in the actual deck, so fluffles just to draw. And then it's got Phantom Knights and Orcast and. Uh, this dude is gonna do a lot of stuff, but in the end, the turn one was not that great. Like, it was just Dingirsu with a couple of back rows. We're gonna speed things up. Um, Galatia looking for Oxtrader Return, of course. Uh, adding even more stuff to Mill to actually thin the deck. And there you go, he's got Dingirsu double set. That was it. So. We have no piercing the darkness, and actually right here, piercing the darkness would have been so freaking useful, but still no piercing the darkness. So we started with double summoner's art in order to thin the deck and get our the, the, our red dice black dragon. Then we went with the red dice inside. We sat the boy and then of course flipped that up to be able to use the red dice fusion. So we sat the return of the red dice, red dice fusion to go into the red dice last dragon. And here instead you're gonna see how useful shield warrior is going to be. So uh, we got the Phantom Knight's sword. Um, we have he's got double back row basically to uh, boost this boy up, and that's why I told you uh, piercing the darkness here would have been so useful because we could have attacked basically and inflict at least 2800 damage. But yeah, we got the Mapura in hand, so. We're not chilling, but we're not that in, in that tough situation, you know. It's going on with this stuff. We have the Return of the Red Dice. So, um, it's got the um, the Break Sword to begin with. Deciding to pop the back row, of course. So, I chained that uh, to... And I used the effect to bring out the Red Dice Black Dragon. Guess what? The card gets destroyed. So, I use also the second effect. And I bring out another monster. The other Red Dice, the Retro Dragon. So, the, his Break Sword is not getting destroyed because of the effect of the that protects from destruction then is going to use uh, is going to link summon into nightmare unicorn to get my uh, slash dragon being basically um, returned to the extra deck he's going with the fluffle stuff then skeleton to bring back the Ningirsu so he's got another sand to the graveyard there you go I don't know why I went for the Retro Dragon, though, uh, but still, that's fine. And then uh, Phantom Knights of Ragged Glows, uh, more effect of the Phantom Knights. Attacking this point, guess what? Shield Warrior products, we're chilling now. And here comes the thing, now we can just use Red Eyes Inside to get the uh, Red Eyes Spirit. And then XC summoning to Big Eye, taking control of the Dingirsu. That is mine. And now we can normal summon red dice, set my our cards, we're chilling, we can just start attacking. At this point there's not really you can do, to be honest. Uh, we have a protection for our dice black dragon. We also have another red dice black dragon summon just in case. Um, so he needs to get rid of a lot of stuff. Uh, toy vendor to draw even more, but what can he do now? That's the thing. Horror summoning the nightmare, and at this point he just surrendered because there was nothing he could do. B guy actually having access to a very large uh, um, pool of rank 7 is very good for red dice. Simply love this. Uh, I will play the red dice black flare dragon. I think flare, metal flare dragon. 
Dixies for red eyes. I will play that if I had it, to be honest, so... Uh, but I don't have it. Anyway, these red eyes... Uh, it's lovely, and I actually think it's fair that Red Eyes gets his, get, got his own Eigen Rumble Summon skill, as Blue Eyes and Dark Magician has, so now we have a fair thing among all the OG Ace normal monsters. Love it. And yeah, guys, this is my build. Let me know what you think in the comment section down below. Hope you enjoyed this spicy idea with Tenny and Piercing the Darkness. Uh, um, let me know if you already knew about the Return of Red Dice being already uh, being able to be flipped uh, straight away when you set it with the skill. That's all, guys. Thanks a lot for watching. And as always, see you in the next one.